This is a step-by-step -step guide for Zombies in Spaceland's Easter Egg in 2024. If you have fortune cards, you want to run Perkin Short, Reanimated, and Super Miniman. That one is very important. Also, check how many Super Minimans that you have. If you have at least two, then that's great, but if you only have one, save it for the boss fight and do the Fate Strap for the SETI Comp step. More on that later. Additionally, you should bring the Fate cards Nade Party and Eagle Eyed. If you don't have Fortune cards though, run things like 5 Second Muscle, Best for Last, Mana Up, Eagle Eyed, and Nade Party. Also, before you go into the Easter Egg, you can practice the boss fight in the Boss Battle tab so you don't just waste your time dying in a boss over and over again. And finally, you'll want to keep your Kendall 44 the entire game. First thing you want to do is turn on power and unlock Pack-a-Punch. To get out of the spawn room, turn on this power switch, then go to Journey into Space and take a right to go to the arcade. Hit the power switch and activate the portal and go through it to go back to Pack-a-Punch. Also in Journey, there's a second power switch you have to activate near the bumper cars. Turn it on and go through the portal near the Volk. Do the same for the switches and portals in Polar Peak in the Kepler system, and when you activate all four portals, you can go into Pack-a-Punch. Interact with these UFOs here to start the Easter Egg. Before you end the round, I recommend you do a few things. First is getting all the SETI comp parts. There's three parts, each having three spawn locations. There's an umbrella, there's a calculator, and there's a boombox. You don't have to craft it on the workbench or nothing like that. This isn't like Treyarch Zombies. Just grab all three parts and you'll be good to go. Once you have all three parts and interacted with the UFOs and Pack-a-Punch, you should go play arcade games for tickets. The bare minimum amount of tickets that you need is 650, 300 for an arcane core and 350 for gold teeth, both of which we will need for a wonder weapon. And there's other things you can buy with tickets as well, like a max ammo and a wonder weapon that gives you basically infinite points. Now you can play any arcade game in here for tickets, but by far the most efficient way to earn tickets is by playing skee-ball. Every time you play skee-ball, you will have three balls to throw. Well, if you walk away from the machine before you throw your third and final ball, the machine will actually glitch out and give you three times the amount of tickets it should have. So for example, if I hit 50 with two balls, I should normally get 100 for that, but if I walk away before I throw the third one, the game will glitch out and give me 300 tickets. When you have enough tickets though, end the round, and part way through the next round, you will hear the big UFO in Polar Peaks Mountain start beeping. At this point, you can go to David Hasselhoff at one of his three DJ locations around the map and interact with him to grab the built SETICOM. Now we have to do three defense challenges where we protect the SETICOM. There are seven locations where this could be, and right now I'm showing you all of them. If you find where you gotta place it, don't do it yet because there are a couple things you should grab before you start this step. First off, you wanna pack a punch your candle to get the baby's breath, and you should buy up and atoms, tough enough, bomb stoppers, and possibly even bang bangs. Also, while you're setting up for this step, make sure you're looking out for gas grenades which can randomly drop from a zombie with a backpack. Finally, you should craft a boom box, which is this game's equivalent of a monkey bomb. To craft it, you gotta go to one of the various coin machines around the map and place either two red coins and one green coin in it, or two green coins and one blue coin in it. The first lockdown is 60 seconds. It's not too bad, you should be able to finish this with just your candle, but if you run out of ammo before it finishes, use your boom box or your gas grenades. If the zombies break the SETI comp, then you'll fail the challenge and the game will spawn in a brute, and after you kill the brute, you'll have to grab the SETI comp back from Hoff on the next round. But if you successfully defend it, a nuke will drop and you'll get a max ammo as well. Sometimes this max ammo can spawn around corners or in a really weird spot, so if you don't see it right away, look around some corners and stuff. Pick up the SETI comp and now we need to get to the next round to do the next one. But before you do that, you should start focusing on building one of the four wonder weapons. I'm gonna tell you how to get all four of these wonder weapons, but you only need to craft one if you're on solo. So if you're running solo, I recommend either crafting the Discord or the Shredder, but ultimately, it's up to you. Now before I go in depth with each one in specific, there is one step that is the same for all four wonder weapons. And I'm just gonna go over this step right now, so I don't have to repeat myself over and over again for each wonder weapon. To craft any of the wonder weapons, you're gonna have to bring a brute to the alligator trap in Kepler. Shoot his helmet off to make this next step easier, and now lure him under the alligator's mouth so the alligator chomps on the brute, and if done right, the brute will destroy the alligator's teeth. Once he breaks the alligator's teeth, you can kill the brute and place the gold teeth in the alligator's mouth. Additionally, to craft any of the wonder weapons, you will also need to grab an arcane core, which you can buy from these stands that are littered all across the map. Now let's get into the wonder weapon. To build the discord, you first need to come to the machine behind the bumper cars and you'll see a disco ball in it. To get the disco ball, you need to place one of each coin in this machine, and when you do, the disco ball should come out and you can collect it. For the next part, you'll need sunglasses to drop, which can randomly drop from a zombie's body. 
get to the last zombie in the round and put your sunglasses on. You'll now have to find five targets with your sunglasses on. If a zombie hits you while you're doing this, then your sunglasses will come off. And if you're near a ledge when you get hit, then there's a good chance that they will fall out of bounds and you'll have to wait until another zombie drops them in a couple rounds. That's why I said get to the last zombie before trying this. Right now, I'm going over all of the locations. Most of the locations are in or around the arcade, so this hopefully won't take you too long to do. When you find all five targets, return to the disco floor in the arcade to pick up the battery. For the final part, you're going to need to get around 15 kills with the disco trap in the arcade. After you get enough kills, the UFO circling the disco trap will now take a different route. Follow this UFO and get around 15 to 20 kills under it with your arcane core, and eventually the UFO will turn into an orb. Grab it with your arcane core and head to the alligator's mouth and shoot one of the panels in this machine. Pick up the stone and head to the alien cutout in the arcade and place all three parts on the cutout to get the discord. Next is the shredder. For the first part, you need to place three red coins in this machine in Kepler. Doing so takes a while, so you should definitely work on the other steps in the meantime. For the battery, you have to wait by the waterfall. Eventually, a boat will come down, and on the back of the boat will be the battery. Spam it with your gun, and as long as you have decent aim, you'll knock the battery into the water, and it'll start spouting up in one of the fountains right above you. Wait for it to shoot up one of the fountains and hurry up and grab it before it goes back down. Finally, you need the crystal. So get a horde of zombies near bomb stoppers and let the chromosphere trap kill around 15 to 20 of them. Eventually, the UFO circling the trap will take a different route and now you want to get kills under the UFO with your gun with the arcane core on it. Around 15 to 20 kills later, the UFO will turn into an orb which you can put on your arcane core. Do so and then head to the alligator's mouth and shoot one of the circles on the machine and grab the crystal and place all three parts on the alien cutout underground near the exit to the waterfall. Next is the face melter. First, you'll need to get the rocket. To get the rocket, you'll need to place three blue coins in this machine and journey into space to get the rocket. Next, you'll need the battery. Go to the portal near the Volk wall by and activate it. Now, don't go in it. Instead, what you want to do is throw a nade into the portal and it'll come back out of the portal red. You now want to keep throwing it towards Pack-a-Punch, but you keep wanting to throw it at the ground so you can pick it back up to reset its timer before it explodes. Keep throwing it towards Pack-a-Punch and when you get the Pack-a-Punch, throw it into the portal and the battery will be on the steps right in front of you. Pick it up and now head to the rocket trap in Journey. Get around 15 to 20 kills with the rocket trap and the UFO will take a different route. Get kills under the UFO with your arcane core and eventually the UFO will turn into an orb. Pick it up and head to the alligator's mouth. Shoot this machine in his mouth and pick up the crystal that reveals itself and place all three parts on the cutout near Mule Munchies in Journey to craft the face melter. And finally, we got the head cutter. I don't recommend that you get this one because you'll have to get more tickets, but if you want to, first you'll need to get the cryo grenades from the prize booth for 350 tickets. Once you have them, get a horde of zombies near Pack-a-Punch and lead them to Polar Peak's entrance. Throw a cryo grenade at the Yeti here and he'll freeze the zombies that come up to you. Headshot the frozen zombies until you hear the Yeti scream, but once you do, you can go to the teleporter in Polar and grab the battery from the Yeti. Next, you'll need to get the Yeti doll from the machine. You can get it from placing three green coins in the machine in Polar Peak. Finally, you need to get 15 to 20 kills with the Steel Dragon Trap in Polar Peak, and if done right, the UFO will take a different route and you'll have to follow it. Get around 15 to 20 kills with your gun with the Arcane Core on it for the UFO to turn into an orb. Pick it up and head to the Alligator's Mouth in Kepler and shoot a part of the machine to reveal the crystal. Pick it up and place all three parts on the alien cutout near the teleporter in Polar Peak to get the head cutter. Now finally, continuing with this easter egg, you need to defend the SETICOM two more times. They're in the same locations I previously showed, so if you don't remember them, rewind the video a couple minutes. And when you find it, place it down and you'll have to defend this one for 90 seconds. Use your gas grenades if you have them and use a boombox as well if you need to. After you complete the second defense, you'll need to flip the round to do it a third and final time. This one is two minutes, which is really difficult, especially on solo, but luckily, I have a trick for you to beat this step pretty much with no problems. So first off, I'm going to go over a strat for people with Super Minuteman. Before you start this, I recommend you build the Medusa device, which you can do by placing three red coins in a machine. So when you start the two minute lockdown, you want to use your baby's breath pretty conservatively. You don't want to spam your ammo. Only kill the zombies when they get really close to the steady calm, and also try and get combo kills as well. Don't just shoot one zombie with your baby's breath. Try and kill three or four with one shot. When you're running low on Kendo ammo, pop your Super Minute Man to get the double upgraded version of the Kendo 44. This version gives you dual wheel candles and also no splash damage. Try and activate Super Minute Man when you have around 80 to 70 seconds left, as if you do it before that, then the strat might not work. Once you run out of ammo in your fire and brimstone, 
activate the Medusa device and that'll give you around a 7 second break. When zombies start spawning again, throw your gas grenades down at the SETICOM if you have them, but if you don't, place down your boombox and that should take you to the end of the timer. Now for the people with fake cards, you're gonna have to do a little more setting up and able to beat this final defense relatively easily. In addition to the Kendo, you'll also want to get the Pack-a-Punched M1 Garand from the spawn room. If you already built the Wonder Weapon, then just go place it back on the cutout and then you can grab it later. Next, you'll want to get an Arcane Core on your M1 and get the Orb from Polar Peak on it. So get around 15 to 20 kills with the Steel Dragon Trap, then around 15 to 20 kills under the UFO with your M1 Garand to get the Orb on it. After you get that, you should also build a Medusa device by placing three red coins in a machine. Place it where your final SETICOM is and then build a boom box as well. I know this is a lot of setting up, but trust me when I say it's worth it. And finally, you'll want to activate Nade Party and get Eagle Eyed ready to activate as well. You don't get card charge from killing the zombies in the SETICOM step, so get it ready before you start it. When you have all of that, place down your SETICOM and spam the M1 at the ground near the SETICOM, and any zombie that gets near the SETICOM while you're spamming the M1 Garand will be stunned by your Arcane Core and eventually be killed by it. Also, any zombies that you kill near the SETICOM will charge your Medusa device as well, which you also need to do. At around the 100 second mark, you want to throw down both your gas grenades. Not at the same time, but throw one down, and then whenever that one goes away, throw your second one down. After you throw your second gas grenade, activate Eagle Eye. At this point, you want to use your M1 fairly conservatively, because the next 50 shots will be an insta-kill. Remember, if you ever get overran and the zombies are about to break the SETICOM, activate your Medusa device to get around a 7 second break. Also, since you activated Nade Party, your gas grenades will recharge every 20 to 30 seconds as well, so make sure you throw those down as often as possible. Once your Eagle Eye runs out, place down your boom box, and after it explodes, you should just be able to use your candles until the nuke goes off. When you finish defending the SETICOM three times, we need to flip a few rounds to start the boss fight. In that time, we should do a few things. First off, refill your card deck from one of the devil stands around the map. Next, craft two boom boxes. Craft one in the machine near Pack-a-Punch and just leave it there, and then craft another one somewhere else and pick that one up. You'll want to get up and atoms, tough enough, bomb stoppers, bang bangs, and racing stripes. And finally, make sure you have your wonder weapon of choice ready to go as well. Two or three rounds after you finish the final SETICOM, you can go back to the Hoff and interact with them to grab the radio. Get to the last zombie and place the radios down near the Pack-a-Punch portal, as you see me do, and interact with one of them to start the boss fight. As soon as you interact with them, the radios will have different lights above them, so make sure you write down which color is where. So for example, in my game, I got red near Pack-a-Punch, yellow near Journey, blue near Polar, and green near Kepler. So that would be what I would write down. The first part of this fight consists of playing three rounds of Simon Says. The UFO will flash a four color sequence in which you need to repeat with the radios when the lights on them turn white. If you take too long to input the correct code, or even if you put an incorrect code in, you will get a weird beeping sound and the brute will spawn in. But if you do do it right, then no brute will spawn in and the UFO will flash a bunch, and that means that you beat that part. At this point, the next zombie that you kill will always drop a max ammo, so remember that. While you're doing this step, if you're running fate cards, make sure you activate 5 second muscle and best for last as soon as possible during this fight as well. Do the last two Simon Says the same way I told you to do the first one, and after you complete all three, a bunch of clowns will spawn in the map. Like, 50, 60, something like that, an insane amount. When the clowns start spawning in, you know that the alien is about to spawn in, so keep your eye on the Pack-a-Bunch portal for the alien and make sure you don't miss a spawn somehow. Now at this point in the fight, I have different strats depending on whether you're running Fate or Fortune cards. So starting with the Fortune cards, get Super Minute Man ready to activate while you're holding your Wonder Weapon and wait near the Pack-a-Bunch portal. As soon as you see the alien spawn, you wanna place down your boom box, activate Super Minute Man while holding your Wonder Weapon out to get the double upgraded version of it and you just want to spam fire on the alien. Specifically, you want to aim for his collar. The light on his collar will start at green, and eventually, after you deal enough damage to him, it'll go to yellow, and then to red. When you damage him enough when it's red, he will kneel down and have a protective bubble around him. At this point, you want to pull out your candle and spam the zombies near the alien, and get up close to the alien and knife the fuse from his backpack. Now, this does have a wonky hitbox, so make sure that you actually do knife it, and it doesn't just glitch out. The way you know you knifed it is if the alien stands up, and does this big AoE attack that can almost insta-kill you if you're close enough. After you get him down for the first time, grab your second boom box from the machine near Pack-a-Punch, place it down, and do the same thing as before. Focus fire on the alien with your wonder weapon, knife the second fuse out of his backpack,
backpack when he's on the ground. And at this point, your Super Minute Man should be just about up. So just train the zombies from Pack-a-Punch down the walkway to spawn and back around the other way. And just keep doing that. Take some shots at the alien here and there. And eventually, you'll get XP and the alien will die and the boss fight will be completed. There is one more step that you have to do though. I'll explain that after I explain the Fate Strat. This one is nowhere near as easy as the Fortune Strat. You just want to keep training the zombies from spawn to the Pack-a-Punch portal and back. You want to have enough distance from the zombies to where they are still following you, but if the alien does attack you, you won't get caught in the horde of zombies and die. Take this boss fight slow. You do not want to rush it because when you rush this boss fight and you try and get it done fast is when you will 100% of the time make a really bad mistake and cost yourself the run. So take this nice and slow. After you deal enough damage to the alien, he will get this protective bubble around him and kneel to the ground. Pull out your candle and spam the zombies that are spawning and knife the fuse out of the alien's backpack and run away from him before he does his AoE attack. Remember that you have two boom boxes that you can use as well as hopefully some gas grenades. So take it nice and slow. Make sure you're not in any sticky situation where you're going to die or anything. Do this two more times and eventually you'll get the XP on the screen for killing the alien and the boss fight barriers will disappear. After you kill the alien, right in front of the Pack-a-Punch portal will be the alien fuses. Pick them up and place them inside the Pack-a-Punch machine and then Pack-a-Punch your Wonder Weapon. To complete the final step, you need to shoot the five blue parts of the Spaceland sign with your Wonder Weapon to turn them yellow. Shoot the two on the left and the two on the right. Save the top one for last. You want to lower the UFO above Pack-a-Punch and then shoot the top light and if done right, it'll shoot a laser directly above Pack-a-Punch destroying the UFO. Now finally, go back to the Pack-a-Punch portal and right in front of it will be a piece of the Soul Key. Pick it up and that is the Zombies in Spaceland Easter Egg completed. After you grab the Soul Key in future games of Spaceland that you play, you can enter the code left right left up down with your d-pad in the lobby menu to play as david hasselhoff if i was able to help you beat this easter egg make sure you drop a like if you're still having trouble leave a comment down below and i will try to help you out even further if you want to see more infinite warfare easter egg guides in the future including an easy way to beat the most annoying step in zombies history the chemistry step drop a like and subscribe if you're new